Hey guys. here <clears throat> smoking my country gentleman with some McBaron's gold and extra in it hoping this Veterans Day finds you well I've got I know of quite a few subscribers who are veterans couldn't possibly name them all because I would miss some, and that wouldn't be right. But I just want to say to you, I hope you have a great Veterans Day. I hope it's meaningful to you. I just want to say thank you for everything that you guys have done in service to this country in support of and in defense of the freedoms that we love. And to all veterans from people who, you know, who signed on the dotted line, volunteered their services, from those who never made it out of training, to those that served multiple tours of duty, those who fought in multiple wars, those who served in peacetime, every one of you are an integral part of this country and part of the fabric of this nation. And, uh, thank you is not enough. But I try to remember a quote from John F. Kennedy. I'll get it wrong, so. You know what, I got my computer right here beside me. Maybe I can look it up. Being attacked by a massive fly. Anyway, uh, just wanted to say thank you so much for everything you've done. Those that continue to serve, oops. All right, let's see if this brings up that quote before I waste too much time here. Kennedy said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Uh, to me, what that means is when you say thank you, or I'm sorry, or anything else, uh, and your actions don't back up the fact that you're thankful, or that you're actually sorry, you need to look inward. So on Veterans Day, I just ask you folks, to look within yourselves and find out what it means to you find out what our veterans mean to you by all means let them know and then as that quote said uh, live in a way that shows that you're thankful Don't squander the freedoms they fought so hard to give us. I'm not going to get too deep into politics now, but anyway, um, in the past couple of years, I've been doing a, a website, a blog, whatever you want to call it. It's on. It's got a blog. It's on Facebook. It's on Twitter. Anyway, it's called Honor the Veteran, and every day, I haven't been doing it for a little while now, but uh, I'm going to start back tonight. This is a perfect night to start back. 
I do something, post a story, um, look up historical events that happened and write stuff about them, uh, highlight veterans, highlight uh, people that did something in battle or you name it. It's kind of a, across the board, a bunch of different stuff, but it all deals with our military and our veterans and uh, the way they form the history of this country. I actually started last year day by day listing all the people that are on the Vietnam veterans, the Vietnam Memorial Wall, and, uh, typing them all out, researching a little bit about them. That became an overwhelmingly large project. I've gotten through about probably close to 35,000 of them. Anyway, I ran across this thing last year and it, it listed 12 different kinds of poems. You know, when, I was, when I was in school and I was growing up, a poem was a poem. You know, roses are red, violets are blue, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I didn't know there were all kinds of different poems. I wasn't a, an English major in school and Anyway, I've kind of got interested in writing, and I found this thing that listed all these different types of poems and how they're put together and stuff like that, and it uh, piqued my interest, and I thought I would try to write, there were 12 of them, I thought I would try to write one of each around a specific theme, and this, the theme I chose for that was our veterans and military. And, uh, I thought today I would just read a few of those. If you're not interested in it, feel free click somewhere else or whatever it won't offend me I'll tell you what kind of poem they are but I can't tell you exactly uh, what makes it that kind of poem I would have to look it back up but if you're interested you can look it up this first one is called a gnomic g-n-o-m-i-c gnomic it's called dilemma Faced with a dread dilemma, that is to kill or be killed, man must decide for himself. That's gnomic poetry. Kind of like a haiku, which is this next one. Haiku. Everybody knows what a haiku is. The sun sets in ways not imagined by mortals, taking life with it. something specific in mind when I wrote all of these. So. Uh, this next one is a sonnet. Sonnets have a particular way that they're put together, which I can't recall, but I did it. So <laughs> This one's called The Letter. Visions of your sweet smile drift through my heart reminding me of the joy we loved best. Now I fear visions, dying and dead dominate my thoughts, never let me rest. I cry because I can't remember you. I tell myself I see you, but I lie. I want to believe what I feel. I'm through with this endless pain of wanting to die. Then it happens, mail call, photo, life, all of the pain carried for months flees me. I stare at your face for hours, pull the knife from my soul and stab it into a tree. With that single piece of mail, one letter, you killed death, stripped from my soul the fetter. So this next one is called a villanelle. I like this one. I can remember, uh, I can't remember the exact pattern, but this one has a rep two repeating lines that repeat in a specific order throughout the poem. I call this one, Those Who Came Before. It's 
written from the point of view of a enlisted man in the middle of war who may be seen by other people not quite the same way he sees himself. If you listen, you can hear the repeating lines. It's not too hard. Hero, not I, honor those who gave all. They lived, they died, men alone defending. Like those who came before, they rose, stood tall. Brothers, almighty, standing proud and tall, join together one voice of thee we sing. Hero, not I, honor those who gave all. In the face of evil, backs to the wall, upholding the oath they forever cling. Like those who came before, they rose, stood tall. I, like so many who answered the call, paralyzed with fear, stood outside the ring. Hero, not I, honor those who gave all. In place of fear, courage before the squall, on your feet, soldier, no fear of dying. Like those who came before, they rose, stood tall. So many names now written on the wall. Remembering them, I stand here reading. Hero, not I, honor those who gave all. Like those who came before, they rose, stood tall. next or not. This one's an elegy. I'm going to read it. Why not? An elegy is a tribute to someone who has died. It's written in a certain way as well. This one's kind of long, so stick with me. It's called Christopher. I don't know who Christopher is. I don't know who the guy who's speaking is, but. How can I carry on with you not here? I'll never get to see your smile again, except in the darkness of memories that should be full of joy, but they're not. Not to say I don't have good memories. They somehow remain hidden and afraid to let themselves be seen. It's dangerous. What if they're consumed by the sorrow? The pain prevents me from thinking of you. I only think of how I'm here alone. I feel you burning a hole in my heart. It's killing me all over again, each day, one after another, dying, the same death repeated, never ending. Your laugh, that infectious laugh that you had is silenced, never to be heard again. No matter how hard I try, I can't laugh. It just turns to tears, and I'm tired of tears. What am I supposed to do with this pain? It has to serve some purpose. It has to. I force myself to try and think of you. The time you helped that old man change a flat, he was calling you a saint the whole time. When you refused to take any money, I really thought he was going to kiss you. The time you saved that poor dog from the creek, I've never seen compassion like that. I can't count the number of times I heard Dad say, you should be more like Christopher. He and I both knew I could never be. It never bothered me when he said it. It only made me glad you were my friend. You were such a great example to me. Dad could only dream of being more like the example he wanted me to be. I don't think I ever heard a cross word. Never saw you treat your parents poorly. No officer could ever accuse you of not upholding the highest standards. The men in your unit looked up to you. You were like a father or big brother. They respected you. They thought well of you. I suppose eventually it ends. If it doesn't end, maybe it changes. 
Maybe I can take all these feelings and turn them into something positive. Maybe I'll name my child after you. I think you both would like that honor. This next one is an acrostic. An acrostic is a poem that uh, if you read the first letter of each line written down, spell something out. Call this one PTSD. It spells out post-traumatic, the lines of it do. Excuse some language in here. Phantom Fury was some heavy shit, bro. Our brass said the worst since Huey City. Soon he set up welcoming committee, the Battle of Fallujah Carnage show. That kid was probably seven years old, running right at us, wearing a damn bomb. I'm supposed to sit, I'm supposed to do my job, stay calm, unhinged. I let my emotions take hold. Many nightmares later, I still kill him. Awakened, screaming, sweating, hell on earth. Ten years have passed and still suffering dearth. I barely hang on. My outlook is grim. Come, Lord. Come quickly. Save me from myself. I hate the reason behind that poem. This one is a limerick. <clears throat> Limerick's not typically serious. So it's, it's kind of a challenge to write one about something other than, you know, the girl from Havana. It's called Overlord. Operation Overlord in 44. Hit the beaches in force and closed the door. Shells rained down, many troops drowned, but Hitler owned France no more. I'll go ahead and read this last one. I wasn't going to, but I will. Excuse me. As I pour soda, which I rarely drink, all over myself. Sestina um, is a series of stanzas that have six lines in it. And the last word of each line is repeated in a different order in the next stanza. All through the stanzas. There's six stanzas of six lines each. The word, the last words flip-flop back and forth in each line. And then the last stanza is three lines and the last two lines of that stanza each use three of those words. If you're keeping score there you know. Alright, <clears throat> this one's called Generations. My father's father served between the two. His brothers and all three sons served as well. Different times and distant lands they marched on. On ships and planes they sailed and flew from home. Their duty was to serve the land they loved. Patriots, one and all, served with honor. For liberty and justice, with honor. Fighting tyranny during World War II with pictures in their wallets of ones loved, old-fashioned chivalry alive and well, dreaming of and longing for those back home, until that day came, instead, they fought on. Values America was founded on, instilled, them, instilled in them by parents with honor. Most of them raised in a small country home, sometimes four kids in a bed made for two, food from a garden, water from a well, they were content besides the ones they loved. When father came back, he found one he loved, 
ask her to marry, put on a ring, and put a ring on. Things didn't always go perfectly well. A divorce granted. Thank you, Your Honor. Kids divided. He got one, she got two. It became a house, no longer a home. Years down the drain, I finally left home, drawn across the country by the one I loved. Forgiveness, redemption, now we raise two. Values returned, and we'll pass them on. We speak of those veterans with honor, drinking from the metaphorical well. The next generation's souls, it is well. For long, we long for the promised land we call home. Our children's children will surely honor, love one another because they were loved. Though our sun sets, our candles still burn on. The flame from the one that was lit by two. The old family well drew abiding love. Love built the home and the rock we stand on. Always we honor the one from two. So that's it. found another little haiku I wrote later on here. I'm looking on a website where I got a bunch of stuff. This one's called Fox Company. It's a haiku. Determination, Korea, chosen, we will hold. Semper Fidelis. Alright, so that's enough of that. <clears throat> Hope you managed to stick around through all that. If you have any questions about any of that, let me know in the comments. Thanks for listening, and I hope everyone has a great Veterans Day. Never forget.